Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial tailored specifically for beginners. If you're looking to dive into the world of data visualization and business intelligence, you've come to the right place. Power BI might seem daunting at first with its various components and features, but don't worry, I am here to guide you through it step by step. In today's session, we will start with the very basics. I understand that getting started is often the hardest part, which is why I have simplified the process for you. Below in the video description, you will find a link to all the files you need. So go ahead and download them to follow along. This hands-on approach is the best way to learn. And by the end of this tutorial, you will be amazed at what you've accomplished. In just about 25 minutes, you're going to create your very first Power BI dashboard. We will cover how to import data, create visualizations, and finally, how to publish your dashboard to the web, sharing your insights with the world or just your team. Imagine that in less than it takes to watch an episode of your favorite show, you have a functional and interactive dashboard. So grab a coffee, download the files, and get ready to embark on this Power BI journey. Trust me, it's easier than you think and I'll be here to help you through every step. Ready to get started? Let's jump right into it and kickstart your journey to becoming a Power BI Pro. In case you don't have Power BI installed yet, you can do that really quickly from the Microsoft Store. So just open Microsoft Store from your PC Look for Power BI. You're going to see it pop up here. Select that and install from here. So you see the install option here if it's not yet been installed on your PC. You can also go to powerbi.com, go to product and install it from here. Once you have it installed on your PC, just open it, log in with your work account then you're going to come to this first page to create some reports. You're going to want to get some data. So that's the first option we see here. You're going to see your recent sources down here and access to different tutorials on Power BI. If you have the time, make sure to check this out as well. Now I'm just going to close this and introduce you quickly to this page here. But just so I can zoom in, I'm going to make my screen smaller. So the first place we land on is the report tab here. But first, we need to add data to create any report. It's asking us here whether we want to import it from Excel, SQL, and some other common data sources. If you don't have your data source here, you can get that from another source and it's going to bring up this pop-up where you get a list of all common data sources. And you can see that you have a lot of options to choose from. You also have this in categories. So we can select file. We see Excel workbook as a source, text CSV, and so on. If you come to the category of order, you can import data from the web, SharePoint, or data feed, and lots of different options. In this case, my data is in Excel and it's also in a text CSV. So we are going to be importing two data sets. One is our invoice file, which is a text file. And the other one is our customer master data. That one comes in as Excel file. I'm gonna start off with the invoice data. So I'm going to come to file and click on text CSV and connect. You can browse for your file right here. Mine is sitting inside a folder in my desktop. Let's open it. This is going to open up a preview of your data. Now you can decide if you want to directly load it to Power BI or transform it. In most cases, you're going to want to have it transformed because you want to make sure that your data is recognized correctly by Power BI. For example, you want to make sure that your numbers are correctly recognized as numbers, your dates are correctly recognized as proper dates, your texts are correctly recognized as text, and sometimes you might want to clean up the data or add new columns. 
You can do all that if you click on the transform data button. Now, this view you see here is the Power Query editor. If you're using Excel and you're using Power Query there, this is the same Power Query that you have in Excel. Notice that the headers are automatically recognized as headers. They are not inside my data set, but they got promoted. So Power Query automatically applied this step because this is how my data looked at first. My numbers are shown as text. If you look at the data type here, I still have text shown for numbers, but it's automatically promoted the headers and it changed the data types. I have all numbers showing now for my numbers and text shown for text. So it tried to recognize whether we are dealing with a number here. We can see that with this icon, this is a whole number or we are dealing with text. It's good practice to go through this to make sure that your values have the proper data types. This is going to minimize errors once you start reporting. In this case, it's fine. I have sales as a whole number. Well, I'll just make some adjustment to the format. So it looks like I have no decimals here, but maybe in the future, my sales values will have some sense in it. I don't want that to be cut off. So I'm going to have this change to the currency data type. Another thing I want to do is combine these three columns because currently I have years separately, month and day separately. I want to get a date column. Having a date column is a necessity if you want to do any type of time intelligence analysis in Power BI. So it's super easy to do that here. You just have to select these three columns. I'm going to select month first because I want to use the US regional settings. Then click on day and then year. Right mouse click, go to merge columns. For my separator, I'll go with slash. So I'll click on custom, put in slash and call this date. Click on OK. Now I'm not done here because the date has a text data type. That's not correct. I'm going to adjust this to date data type. Now you will notice that all my steps are registered here. So every time I upload a new file with the latest data, all these steps are automatically going to be applied to that data set. Okay, so that's it for the invoice data file. So now let's also upload the other data, which is the customer master data. So you can right mouse click here and add a new query to this. You can see that the different available sources are listed here for you to choose from, or you can make your selection from the ribbon here. You also have the sources listed there for you. My master data is an Excel workbook. So I'm going to select the Excel workbook source and it's right there. Click open again. We are going to see a preview of what we have inside the file. I have a table. You can see that from this icon and this is the sheet. So if you click on this, you get to see the preview on this side. Now it's always best practice to go with the table. If you have tables in your file, this way you can avoid numbers that might just show up on this sheet that you don't want imported. Then click OK. Let's check what we have. So we have customer ID. That's a whole number. This is text, the customer name. We have a lot of information about the customer here. We have city, province. It would be great to split city and province into two separate columns. You can do that easily with Power Query. So click on the column, right mouse click, and split column. We're going to go with split column by delimiter because if you take a closer look at the data, the logic is that the province is inside the bracket. So we're going to go with by delimiter and it's already picked the bracket up here. I'm just going to have the space before it and then decide whether I want it at each occurrence of the delimiter 
or the leftmost delimiter. In this case, I have just one bracket here, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with it and click on OK. And then I have my city in the first column and province in the next one. I'm just going to double click here and rename this to city. Now the province has that extra ending bracket. We want to remove that. So let's select the column, right mouse click and replace values. So notice with every right mouse click, you get a lot of common options that you're going to need when it comes to transforming your data. You also get to see these options from the menu up here. So I'll click on replace values. The value to find is the closing bracket. And we're going to replace that with nothing and click on OK. Now we have our province reported correctly. I'm just going to rename the query name to just master customer. Another thing I want to do is to remove columns that I don't need in my data model. To do that, you can just highlight the column and select remove columns. But since I have a lot of columns here that I don't need and I want to remove, I don't want to keep scrolling back and forth. I'm just going to go to choose columns right here and choose the ones that I actually want to keep. So I definitely want to keep customer ID because that is what connects this table to my sales table. The ones I don't need is this one, the phone number, fax number, website, and delivery method. So I'll just uncheck this, click on OK, and then I can see that a new step has just been added here, removed other columns. Now, like I said before, all the steps you carry out in transforming your data are recorded. Every time a new master data is uploaded here, these steps will automatically be applied. If you did something wrong, you want to remove a step, just click on the X here. Or if you want to insert a step, you can just go back to the previous step and do what you need to do on your data. And it's going to insert a step in between. So now that we have our files uploaded here, let's go and apply this. So close and apply. And it's going to load the data into Power BI, into the data model. So now that the data is here, we are ready to build the visuals, but not so fast. Let's check where her data actually went. So we can see her fields here. All the columns are organized in order. This is her invoice data, and this is her master customer data. The connection between these two is the customer code and the customer ID. So instead of merging the tables to bring over all the customer information that we need to the invoice data file, we are going to use relationships and connect this together. Right, so that's the better approach. That's why we have relationships down here. And notice that the relationship was automatically set up for me. How did it know what to do? Well, Power BI is smart enough and it recognized that customer ID and customer code seem to be the same thing. This is the lookup table and this is the fact table and it automatically set up that connection for me. It did that because I have a setting enabled in my options that does that automatically. And I can show you right here. It's under File, Options and Settings, click on Option. Under Data Load for Current File, I have a check mark for Auto Detect New Relationships after data is loaded. In case you don't have that, you're going to have to create your own relationship manually from this view. All you have to do is click on one side and drag with your mouse to the other side. And it is automatically going to insert a relationship for you. Now, if you want to get back to your data, what if you forgot to add a step or you need to split some other columns? You're going to see your data here in the data tab. If you ever want to go back to Power Query, one way of doing that is to right mouse click on the data you want to work on and click here to edit query. It's going to bring you back here so you can insert a new step or make any updates that you've forgotten to make. So now that we have our data loaded here, 
and we have our relationship set up, let's go and start to create some reports. Creating visuals is super easy in Power BI. You just have to select what you want. So let's say as a first step, I want to have sales analyzed by this one, which is the customer category name. So I'm just going to place a check mark beside the two. So I'll place a check mark beside sales and also place a check mark beside customer category name. And Power BI automatically inserted a clustered chart. If I don't want that and I want to get another chart instead, you come to the visualizations tab and right here, you can make different selections as you wish, but I'm just going to stick with the clustered column charts. And that's it. I don't have to do anything special, but just click on what I want. Now, this is summarizing the data for all the years. I don't want that. I want to have the filter for year and I want to have that added as a slicer. So if you come to the visualizations tab and take a closer look at the visuals to see what they are and what options you have, you're going to come across this one. That's called slicer. Now, if I click on it right now, it's going to change the visuals that I made earlier. And that's because it's going to think you want to make adjustments that you want to update the visual. So make sure before you make a selection for something new, you click away. Now I'm just going to go back. I'm going to click to the side here and insert my slicer. So this time I just started with a visual. Now I need to decide what to do, like what to have on the slicer. So here you have some options here that you can use to adjust your visuals. I want to have date added to my visual, but notice there is this arrow on the side of the date. What that means is that I have more options. So Power BI went ahead and automatically added a date hierarchy to my single date column. Because I want to have a slicer just for year, I'm going to select that and it's automatically going to be added here. Now, this is one way of looking at dates. So whenever I'm shifting this or updating it, the visuals is getting updated as well. I'm not a fan of this view. We can change that. So while you have your cursor clicked on the visual, come to options, slicer settings, and on that style, you have different options to select from. I'm going to go with drop down. Make this smaller, drag it, and have it placed somewhere at the top. So now when I click on this drop down, I can make a selection of the year I want and my chart updates automatically. Now, if you want to change the look of this, you can do that with these options here. So if you take a closer look, this is the formatting option. Here you can decide if you want to hide or show your axis. If you want to add data labels, just like we have here, but I'm going to have that turned off. You have option for colors, position, and so on. On the general tab, you can adjust the title. I'll just rename this sales by category and the update will be done here. So as you can see, you have lots of options here to choose from and automatically you also get this tool tip. So when you hover over each of these columns, you get a better glimpse of the data. Now, I just want to hide these access labels as well. So let's go back to the Y axis and turn off the title for this one. And also turn off the title for the X axis. Okay, this looks much cleaner. Now, if you want to change the color of this, again, you can go back to the options. Under columns, you can adjust the colors directly from here. I'm just going to go with this one. Next up, Let's have the table that shows our sales value by month, does a year on year percentage change calculation and also a year to date calculation. So we're going to do time intelligence analysis without writing a single function. Check this out. I'm just going to click to the side here, go and grab this table visual. Let's drag it up here. I want to get month in there. So I'll just place a check mark beside month 
and then I want sales value. So I'm going to place a check mark beside sales. Okay, so that shows me the sales values for each month. I want to get the comparison to previous year. If you want to do this without writing the function from the scratch, you can. So just come up here, click on quick measure for calculations, click on the drop down and scroll down to time intelligence. You have some options. I want to get a year over year change. Now I have to select my base value. It's sales. So I'm going to drag sales in here. My date field is right here. I'm going to click and drag date and drop it in this box. If you get an error at this stage, that would be because your date doesn't have a calendar icon in front of it. This calendar icon has automatically created a calendar table for you behind the scenes. That's why we are able to automatically get these additional breakdowns. Now, it's good practice to add a separate calendar table yourself to that data model, especially if you're dealing with different fact tables. And each of those fact tables has its own date columns, right? So you want to have a separate calendar table in your model. But if you're just getting started with Power BI and you want to test things out or you have a simple model, you can use this option. Okay, I'm going to click on hard and formula got automatically added by Power BI. You don't even have to look at this. You can ignore this but you of course want to check your numbers to see that they are given the right result. So with my table selected, I'm going to place a check mark beside this and I'm going to get my year on year percentage calculation. Now, if you don't have this calendar icon, how do you get it? Well, I have that option ticked here. So you have to go to options under data load. I have a check mark besides this auto date or time for new files and here on that current file i also have a check mark against it so auto date time for time intelligence right so if you want to get that you have to place a check mark here so get that calendar icon beside your date now a lot of advanced power bi users have that unchecked because they create their own calendar tables so just remember that option is there just check or uncheck it depending on your requirements. Now, next hop, let's get sales year to date on our table. So we go back to quick measure, click on the drop down and scroll down to time intelligence and select year to date total. Again, just like before, I'll bring in my sales year as the base value and also my dates in the date box. Click on hard and have the sales year to date added to my table as well. So this part is done. Now let's add a line chart to show quantity by month. So we go again to our visualization tab and look for line charts, which is right here. Remember, you always have to click outside of here before you make a new selection. So I'm clicking outside of here and going for this line chart. I'm just going to place that down here. So because the line chart is for quantity by month, I'm going to place a check mark beside quantity and beside month. And that's it. We are done. You can add a header to this report by inserting a text box, typing your text, adjust the formatting as you need, and place your text box on top of your report. You also have KPI cards that you can add to your report. So let's say one KPI that you want to track and you want to see is quantity. So I'm going to put a check mark against quantity and it's going to insert it on top of the order. We adjust the size, drag it and put it to the side of my report. Okay, so you can have this customized in many different ways. If you want to add more pages, you can add more pages here. Now, this way I can filter for any year I want to analyze. My year on year percentage changes, my sales year to date updates, my sum of quantity reports update as well, and also the KPI card as I make a selection of the different years. 
and if I get a new data, all I have to do is replace the current invoice text file with the new invoice text file and then click on refresh and everything is updated automatically. In case you need to do more complex calculations that you can't find in the quick measure, you're going to need to write your own measures by clicking on new measure. To be able to write correct measures, you need to learn the DAX formula language. Now, just like with Excel, if you're familiar with Excel formulas, there's basic and there's advanced. So with just basic DAX, you can already do a lot of complex analysis. That's a topic for another video. So I'm just going to rename this page, double click and call it report and let's save our file. So go to file and save, give it a name and save the file. If you want to share your report with others so they can interact with the report, you're going to want to publish it. Just go to publish right here and select a destination. This is going to publish it to the Power BI service. I'm just going to publish mine to my workspace. So I'm going to click and select and it's publishing it to Power BI. It might take some time. Once it's done, you're going to see the success message right there. To open it, you can directly click on the link and it's going to open up the browser and take you to your report on the web here. You can interact with the report on the web because check this out, we are on powerbi.com. So if you're logged into your office account, you can just type in powerbi.com and you can access your report directly from the web. You have the option to share the report with others as well either people in your organization, specific people, people with existing assets, and so on. Now, you can also share this report in Teams. So depending on the rights and where you publish it, you can have this report as a separate tab in Teams. So in my case, I have the separate tab already added for me by Power BI. So if I go home to my workspace, I can have the reports open here and all the interactivity we saw before is here. You can filter by selecting an option from any of your visuals here as well. And that brings us to the end of our introductory journey into the world of Power BI. As you've likely noticed, the functionalities within Power BI are extensive and robust from importing and cleaning data so creating intricate relationships and crafting your own DAX functions. For complex calculations, Power BI offers a comprehensive suite of tools for your data analysis needs. Perhaps you've been working with Power Query or Power Pivot in Excel. If so, you're in luck. Much of that knowledge is transferable, making your transition to Power BI smoother and quicker than you might expect. It's all about building on what you already know and expanding your skill set from there. I hope you found this tutorial enlightening and empowering. Remember, this is just the beginning. There's a whole world of data waiting to be explored and visualized. And with Power BI, you're well equipped to tackle it. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new, please show your support by giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, Consider subscribing to the channel for more insightful tutorials like this one. Your engagement helps us grow and continue providing insightful content. Thank you sincerely for watching. Keep practicing, stay curious, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, happy analyzing.